So as I went through the decolonizing process, I began to find out about the truth, not only of the political uh, obfuscation of our history, the removal of it from all of Canadian society, the fact that most Canadians didn't even know what a treaty was or they thought it was some old document that had no meaning, uh, the fact that our people and all of the knowledge that they had shared that has transformed the world is not written down in any of the history books. Our agricultural knowledge actually is what everybody eats today. The majority of the products that are in your drugstores today come from Indigenous knowledge. None of it recognized. But as I began to learn that, I became very, very uh, proud of my ancestors, proud of the knowledge, and wanted to delve into more of the art history. It's through education that we find these things out, and it's through these educational processes where we can remove these notions of squaws, etc., from the literature and the education system, and we can start to bring this wonderful world that we have created together to the forefront. We have contributed probably more as an Indigenous people to the knowledge of the world and knowing that has, has built a pride that is beyond and it has been the most important fundamental thing to my growth as an individual. And I have seen that, prisoners that are in prisons and then they get to go to a ceremony and for the first time they, they feel connected. Our youth, once they actually see a ceremony or get to be a part of it, they're connected. Our cultures are very important. And cultures and the importance of maintaining every single culture in the world, it would be a human achievement that's really important because, for instance, one of the most fascinating parts about knowing about my culture was realizing that we talk in verbs. We don't talk in nouns, so we don't materialize things. So everything is about action and moving. And it's, it's about the way you are or what you're doing or why you're doing it. And it shifts the focus into a, a fundamental part of what is respect. And respect is not when we, when we talk about like all our relations, the anthropologists will think, oh, well, we're talking about our bloodlines. And it's not. All our relations is the grass, it's all these plants, it's the air that we're breathing. And realizing the vastness of the scope of the way Indigenous people think is critical to being able to ensure that humanity actually can get on a good path where they're in sync with the world around them. Our measure of success for our Aboriginal people was to ensure that the places that we were living were exactly in the same condition as they were when we arrived. That to us was a successful way of living with the world around us. That was considered uncivilized because we didn't bulldoze down everything, because we didn't take more, we weren't, you know, hoarding and, and uh, creating all kinds of merchandise and supplies and stuff. Ours was a way of life that lived with and within all of life in a way that didn't disrupt anything. I believe that we have a lot to share in this world and if we can decolonize the minds of other people so that they understand first of all that they have a colonized mind and that they have they they have the ability to actually uh, learn about how this colonization processes impact people and I believe if we can if we can do that we can all move forward and move forward in a good way thank you <laughs>